So today we are the next discussant. And we will be discuss all about the chapter 10. Every professional interior designer should do to have a successful business. But first, I will be define the meaning of interior designer. So, what is interior design? Interior designer is someone who works with a client to create aesthetic rooms and spaces. Client range from homeowners to large corporations. The spaces and rooms interior designers create are equally varied, ranging from simple indoor and outdoor home environment to hotel lobbies and lavish mansion. No matter the size, every interior designer works to create spaces that are attractive yet functional. Spaces must also be safe while meeting the specific needs to client. In short, interior designer, it is all about how we experience design from the living room, bedroom, kitchen, and iba pa. Also, Ito kasi yung proyekto na kung saan may isang namamahala na taga-design nyo. Ito yung masasabing sa proyekto, kailangan mo ng isang pamamahala para maisa ayos ng maganda ang pagkakaroon ng design nyo. Gaya na lamang sa pagkakaroon ng design na modern or industrial because an interior designer is someone who has the creativity, skills, and knowledge required to design a beautiful and functional space. If you are an interior designer looking to start an interior design business, then you've come to the right place. And now, let's proceed to the characteristics of interior designer. Interior designer should also possess the following specific qualities. First, is the artistic's ability. Artistic ability is interior designers use their sense of style to develop designs that look great and are aesthetically pleasing. When we say artistic ability, it is include skills and talent to create fine works of art like painting, drawing, sculpting, and others. The next, creativity. Interior designers need to be imaginative and selecting furnishings and fabrics and in creating spaces that serve the client's needs and fit the client's lifestyle. Creativity is the skill and talent to use our imagination to create and solve. A better artist is creative but you don't have to be an artist to be an a creative. Detailed oriented interior designers need to be precise in measuring interior spaces and making drawings so that furniture and furnishings will fit correctly and create the appropriate environment. Every experienced interior designer is aware of the importance of paying attention to details and determines each designing element after much consideration. And then, interpersonal skills. Interior designers need to be able to communicate effectively with clients and others. Much of their time is spent soliciting new clients and new work and collaborating with other designers, engineers, and general building contractors and going projects. And then next, problem-solving skills. Interior designers must address challenges such as construction delays and the high cost or sudden unavailability of selected materials while keeping the project on time and within the budget. So when we say problem solving skills, every design project involves unique design problems which need to be solved with creativity and innovation. And last of the characteristic is visualization. Interior designers need a strong sense of proportion and visual awareness to understand how pieces of a design will fit together to create the intended interior environment. In visualization, this is the conceptualize the whole project and this is the final result of your output. Kumbaga, ito na yung resulta ng yung ginawang outline project. Work 
description of interior designer or nature of work. So, when we say work description, this is the duties and responsibilities of one of the worker of the interior designer because they manage the work of turning their ideas into realities. So, first of the work description is the developed design concept and produces contract documents based on clients' needs. Diba, kapag magpapagawa ka nga ng mga bahay or office, syempre, kailangan mo na ng kontrata ng kliyente bago it, bate ito sa pangangailangan nila, bago natin umpisahan yung mga gagawin. And then, next. And then second, meet with clients to program the project requirements. Syempre, bago mo naman umpisahan yung mga programa na kailangan mong gawin sa isang disenyo, kailangan makipag-usap ka muna sa iyong kliyente. Kailangan malaman mo kung ano yung gusto niyang outline or output na magagawa mo sa kanyang house or office. And so, then third, take accurate as built measurements for developing floor plans and elevation. Ito na yung pagplaplano mo. Kailangan tingnan mo muna yung sukat ng pagpapatayuan mo at tingnan mo muna yung lupa kung ito ba'y naayon sa pagpapatayo mo. And then, fourth, create design concepts and digital presentation with finish selection, furnishing, and fixture. So, dito na yung mga konsepto mo. Kailangan, kung ano yung konsepto mo, yun yung magagawa at matatapos doon sa pagpapatayo mo ng iyong interior. So, kailangan, bago mo mga pagawa yun, meron ka munang makikitang outline na ito yung gagawin, tapos ito na yung matatapos. Yun yung sa pag-create ng mga konsepto. And, number five, present design concepts and takes detailed notes to address customer request. So, ito na yung tinatawag na kailangan may may presenta ka muna ng mga disenyo sa inyong kliyente. Para pagkatapos mo ito mapag-isipan, aaprubahan naman ito ng iyong kliyente. And then, number six, creates project budgets and maintains up-to-date documentation of all activities. Siyempre, sa pagpapatayo naman ng mga bahay or in kind of interior, kailangan may budget ka na. So, kailangan, kakailangan mo rin mag-propose ng budget para sa pagpapatayo. At kailangan, meron ka rin date kung kailan ito matatapos. Example of that, 6 months, kailangan tapos na yon dahil nasa kontrata na yon. And then, pang number 7, manage the coordination and logistics of product, deliveries, and installation. Ito na yung pakikipag-coordination mo para sa mga pagbili ng mga produkto. Kailangan, bago mo mailagay lahat ng mga kagamitan doon sa tinatayo mo na bahay or office or anong klase, basta, kailangan meron ka koordinasyon doon sa pagkukuhanan mo ng mga proyekto ay ng mga produkto. And then, number 8 of work description. Provides follow-up support with customer. Ito na yung kailangan mo talaga bilang isang worker. Kailangan may suporta yung customer mo sa'yo. Kasi kapag wala silang suporta sa'yo, ibig sabihin hindi ka magaling na trabahador. Kailangan yung mga pangangailangan ng customer mo na ibibigay mo para sa ganon, sa susunod na pagpagawa nila, lagi silang sumusuporta sa'yo. And then last, number nine, develops and maintains productive and effective relationship with customer. Ito yung sinasabi natin na communication skills. So, kailangan sa pag sa pakikipag-usap, maayos ka, magaling ka magsalita, magaling kang magaling kang kunin yung loob ng mga customer mo para sa ganun pagkatiwalaan ka nila. And then, ang pakikipag-ugnayan kasi sa mga customer, ito yung pinakamabisa para pagkatiwalaan ka nila. Hindi sila magsasawang tangkilikin yung mga gawa mo, yung mga design mo, yung mga konsepto mo. Para sa ganun, sa susunod, pwede ka pa nilang ipakilala sa ibang kakilala nila na ganito, maganda yung pagkakagawa, maganda yung mga design nyo neto, hindi mabilis masira. Ganun, yung pakikipag- ugnayan sa mga customer. Ito na rin yung isang pinaka-the best sa mga trabahador mo na rin na mas makikilala yung kumpanya yo, yung mga design nyo, yun yung sinasawa, tinatawag na relationship with customers. Makikipag-ugnayan na maayos. Qualification of the worker and skills. So, let's proceed to the interior designer qualification and skills. Once you hired 
an interior designer, you need to check the background of it. And first, effective verbal and written communication skills. Kailangan marunong siya sa pakikipag-usap sa mga kliyente or sa mga customer. Then, problem solving skills, attention to detail, and self-starter. Kailangan marunong din siyang sumold ng mga problema sa company or sa kliyente. Then, programming abilities to extract information and produce reports. Knowledge of building and accessible codes. Kailangan meron siyang mga katangian neto. And then, familiarity with all phases of project, potential issues, and proven history to produce project. So, ayun, kailangan alam niya yung mga ginagawa niya sa paggawa ng mga design-design. And then, kailangan kaya niya itong mapatunayan or kailangan meron siyang proof sa mga ganitong mga project. And then, knowledge of industry, construction cost, and material cost. At isa rin yun sa mga kailangan niyang malaman. Dapat, bago siya gumawa o magumpisa ng mga project, kailangan alam niya na yung mga gagastusin. And then, and basic ability to prepare furniture cost estimate. Ito yung may kakayahan kang tansyahin yung mga magagastos mo o kaya yung mga kasangkapan na gagawin mo. And then, creative eye for detail and preparation of design presentation materials. So, dito na yung mga kailangan nakahanda na lahat ng mga kagamitan mo. Then, ito yung pinaka-importante sa lahat. Education, experience, and licen licensing requirements. So, kailangan kapag mag-hired kayo or ikaw ay papasok bilang interior designer, dapat meron ka ng mga experience and then dapat bachelor degree ka and may license ka na. Also, bachelor's degree design in related field. So, dapat graduate ka sa mga field na kinuha mo. Then, interior design license. Yun na yun, gaya sa mga sinabi ko kanina, licen licensing requirements. And then, experience in healthcare, senior facilities, retail, hotel, multifamily hospitality, high-rise, and mixed use preferred to experience with procurement and specification. So, ayun na nga. Dapat may mga experience ka na sa mga ganitong bagay na nakakapag-senyo ka na sa mga ganitong lugar. And then, dapat meron ka na rin experience managing a department of four or more design staff including budget estimates and project schedules. Proficient in AutoCAD, Photoshop, and Revit. Experience in business development and sales. So, ayun na nga. In overall, kailangan produk produktibo yung pag-iisip mo. Kumbaga, dapat malawak yung pag-iisip mo, paggawa mo ng mga konsepto, design, and then lahat dapat yun nakaugnay doon sa mga pangangailangan ng mga customer or kliyente mo. And then, dapat yung mga disenyo mo, Kabilang din siya sa mga nabanggit na mga detalye, then sa mga nakikasali na siya sa mga cost, then dapat lahat ng mga yon kaugnay sa isang tao na pipiliin mo pag ikaw ay mag-hire ng mga interior designer. Kasi lahat ng yon dapat may karanasan para sa pag-unlad ng yung mga business. In short and in overall, work description or nature of work and qualification and skills, ito yung mga kailangan mong hanapin sa mga interior designer. Kung ikaw ay magpapagawa, kailangan alam mo rin yung nature of work nila. And then, kung ikaw naman na magka-apply or mag hire ng mga trabahador, kailangan yung qualification of skills nila pasado dun sa mga ano mo, hinahanap mo, katangian nila. Kasi, walang silbi yung pagpili mo sa mga interior designer kung hindi rin naman sila marunong makisama, communication skills, and then, hindi rin sila marunong mag-design yung mga konsepto nila, hindi akma doon sa mga pinapagawa ng kliyente. So, kaya dapat kailangan kapag mag-hire ka ng mga ganun or magtatrabaho ka, kaugnay yun sa lahat ng mga pinapakita nila mula sa mga degree license, experience. Pinaka-importante yan, the most important is the experience of the person. Kasi, walang silbi yung mga ek-ek-borek-ek doon na mga nilalagay-lagay nila kung hindi naman nila alam talaga totally yung gagawin nila. So, yun lang po yung sa description of 
workers and nature of work, the qualification and skills.